Hello, all. I am John Michael Bailey, and this is the Wellspring Digital Chat Series, where we uh, dissect the brains of uh, well-known and well-respected marketers, and we pull out the good stuff, and we share it with you, and then we put the, the brains back, and, and they're, they're fine. Um, I, in all fairness, we did... Um, we did record a, a brief intro. There was a problem with the audio, and so we restarted. So unfortunately for our guest today, he has to hear my lame joke one more time. But anyway, I think we're going to get through this. Um, so I I asked one of my most trusted friends and resources, Kathy Bushman, if she could make a recommendation uh, for a PPC badass that I can interview. And immediately she fired back Greg, Greg Finn. So, Greg. You come highly recommended. Please take a moment uh, to introduce yourself to these good people. Thank you for having me, John, A. And B, I am Greg Finn. I run a agency out of Buffalo, New York called Cypress North. And I'm a Lions fan. So oh, it's that hurts. painful recently, that hurts. That hurts. but okay. But enough. like I've got some optimism now. All right. So like there you go. I'm, I'm feeling good. It's good. Go and ahead. And we also have a digital marketing news podcast called Marketing O'Clock that comes out every Friday. So it's the the news flavor of the podcast, and uh, we have a good time. Awesome, awesome. So um, I did a little digging before this, and I, I did read some of your stuff. I read uh, an article you wrote back in January about um, the changes that Google is doing is making to their uh, to their ad uh, basically functions uh, to their ad manager. And, um, you know, every business out there has some sort of uh, some sort of experience with working with PPC. But I think the bulk of them, you know, think of PPC as as Google. There are other platforms. But I wanted to start with Google. Um, how do you feel about Google's almost complete shift to dynamic ads? Do you think putting all of the customization in Google's hands makes sense for the user? Yeah. And when you think about the kind of full, there, so there are some products that are fully automated, right? Then there's automation elements, there's bidding mm -hmm. automation, there's the automation in the ads. And for the most part, a lot of it makes sense um, for, from a Google standpoint, let's say, um, you know, instead of saying you want to pay for a click, if Google thinks, and it's got all this information and, you know, AI, machine learning, things like that, that somebody's going to go ahead and be an actual uh, purchaser. And you, that you might want to pay more for those people. And you might mm -hmm. think, Hey, on average, you know, that could be $5 if we're doing some sort of, you know, kind of like manual bidding, but Google might say, Hey, this is worth we're going to go up, we're going to beat this next person here, you know? So, so on the kind of face value of things, it does seem, you know, to be, to make sense. I think putting on my, you know, um, I guess tinfoil hat here, I would say Please. is that, is that, you know, you got to think this is, um, when you're giving up kind of that full control, that full bidding, something like a performance max where you don't even put the targeting in, right? Like mm -hmm. something like that. Um, you are doing that to an ad platform who makes, who is one of the two biggest companies in the world that makes their money off of ads. Right. <laughs> and so it math. makes sense to be like, <laughs> oh, well, like, Hey, we should move these bids up. Oh, your competitor should move these. Like, so you have to kind of take things, you know, with the grain of salt, obviously do what works with your, for your business. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, for the most part here, um, we use a, a variety of automation, you know, from the bidding standpoint to something like a target return on ad spend or target CPA. Um, and then I'm a little bit less high on some of the performance max, like those full automation type campaigns okay. where there's nothing there but if it works it works and that's our job as an agency and we do use that for a variety of clients that it works on i went one thing that you said that that struck me you said as as an agency owner uh, i like to operate as if i were a fiduciary operating on behalf of my clients which i think really speaks volumes um not just in in how your actions um work but sort of in the un what what the underlying statement of that is saying about Google and what you were saying about, you know, them 
I'm trying not to like <laughs> get too conspiratorial. Um, but like you said, ads are a huge revenue source for them. So um, I think people need to be, be aware of that. Excuse me. A hundred percent. And it does make it, you know, with all this new automation, it does make it a lot harder to accurately report on things. You know, like when mm -hmm. we have a, a client that comes on, um, we're looking at things and saying, here's a look at, you know, we, for a lot of times with PPC, just knowing the way the rules have changed, you have to kind of bid on your own brand. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, that's like, that's a necessary evil. If I didn't have to do it, I would turn it off instantly never look at it again, you know? And so when we report on things, we're like, here's people looking for your brand. You know, there are other people trying to advertise. We kind of use this as like a protective measure. And then, you know, here's our scalable non-branded traffic, people that might not have known us before. And that's mm -hmm. usually what we're looking at. We're looking at kind of growing people that haven't seen that brand before. Um, and then when you have something like Performance Max, there's now going to be some sort of brand controls rolling out. Um, but when you can't see that it's branded versus not branded, it's like, well, I, I'm trying to accurately communicate to my clients uh, how much of this new business is people that have just never heard of them before, right? People always wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, Wellspring Digital, like, that's great. No, they've heard you from somewhere. Right. And then like, you know, you sort of earned that a, a little bit in the past. So um, yeah, I think, I think from a, an, and from a fiduciary like standpoint, you know, it's, it's important to report on that stuff. And it's mm -hmm. one of those things that with some of the automation that you cannot see some of those queries and cannot see what, you know, how people are finding it's just harder and harder to report and make sure you're spending pro properly. The machines are taking over. So I want to switch to video, um, <clears throat> just because it's growing in popular. Well, I mean, it's grown in popularity. It's, it's everywhere. And. Um, I'm curious which platform you feel is generating good ROI uh, from a video ad perspective. I, mean, I think it's YouTube. Examples you've, you've seen. Yeah, YouTube. I mean, that's again a Google answer here. Yeah. <laughs> so go back to Google ads. But, you know, just in general, from like some of the DSPs and a lot of the CPM bidding, I just have not ever seen that work well. Mm -hmm. um, even even YouTube. If you, if you go out there and you're doing awareness campaigns and you're doing um you know just a variety of uh the cpm based bids and things like that i just never really see that work well so i i, I let me do a caveat as well like if you're sure. doing something like um like facebook or you know video ads as well or instagram and you've got some of those kind of conversion elements towards it like this is what we're going for we're not just going for awareness that can be right. good um, but with, with YouTube now, again, being able to say, I'm looking at this, um, the target CPA, you know, and, and I'm willing to pay X amount for this acquisition or action. Um, like those are the things that, that really excite me, you know, not just saying, Hey, we got a thousand people to see this for $10. That's sort of like, who cares? In, in right. My book. Right. So if, if, a, if a client comes to you and says, I really want to do a video campaign around awareness, you know, what would your advice to them be? And this is a great question, John, because this happens all the time. <laughs> so we have a, a, a campaign around a certain number of grocery stores in the Southwest um, trying to drive awareness. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing with that is we're sending people to a landing page um, and uh, tracking how far down the landing page they make it and whether or not they interact with the store finder. Right. Okay. So, so we're making it to say like, he, all right, yes, we have a, a click coming over to, to a site. Um, and then anybody that interacts with the store finder or um, swipes with the carousel, we can see that there's a little bit more engagement there. So it's sort of like one step above it. And whenever we do anything, even like awareness style, um, I think you can probably figure out some sort of conversion, even if it's a lightweight conversion that you'd mm -hmm. want to go towards. Um, so, you know, for the most part, I think that you can do better if somebody's just like, Hey, I just need awareness. Like, right. no, there's probably something you can do somewhere you can send people. And then those signals also, you can see, you know, if you're using different audiences or different affinities or in market audiences, things like that, different targeting on Facebook, um, but you can use those and see who's, who's a little bit more interested. Maybe, maybe they're, they have a fear of commitment. I don't know. That would be good. <laughs> So what um I want I'm curious and this might this might take up the rest of the interview but this question is what's your 
process for matching a target audience per persona to an ad platform for the best results? Yeah. So first off, it's really coming up with that persona first, right? Mm -hmm. So like, um, and, and again, on this awareness side, th this isn't as much as, as what we do, but this is how we go about it right. um, when we go that way. So we'll say, you know, here it, it's the, um, we're going for like we'll come up with these personas a lot of times we'll come up with like funny little names or something like that like you know the plaid dad or something like that you know like this dad wears plaid shirts and you know loves watching i don't know like uh csi <laughs> or something you know i don't know what it would be we kind of like have a little fun with it but then you know like come up with the uh you know the, the actual demographics and stuff um, and then, you know, really kind of look and see what each, each platform has to offer to, to, mm. to fit that. So it's, it's defining those personas first, um, and then coming up with them and saying, um, in a way that we can track them, right. You could take a lot of these different audiences and kind of mold them together. Mm. Um, and you generally in that way, if, especially if you have some sort of conversion, um, elements, right. you lose visibility. So what you sort of want to do is like, just stack them where you can see any of the different um, personas out there or any of the different, let's say we have one that's in an affinity audience, one that's uh, in market audience or something like that. Um, don't mix them all together because then you can't see which one's actually working well. Um, mm -hmm. So instead just uh, show each one and for like, hey, we're targeting people that like CSI, like let's just do that and not like mix a whole bunch of stuff together, but see them all kind of as one. 65 year old farmers who like large chickens as opposed to small chickens and they shop at sears versus no i don't know that's an <laughs> excellent persona there oh you're killing me all right so um speaking of platforms um wh what's a plat what is an ad platform that no one's talking about but should be so if you have do you have, is, uh, so if you have good patience i'll start with one here um if you have good patience, I would say Twitter ads. Um, only I, and it's it's the worst platform. That's why. <clears throat> but I think that there's been a lot less competition over there lately. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get conversion pixels and and things firing over there, like it is a a lot of work to get it to go the right way. Um, but at the same time, there's now some things that are a little bit more familiar probably to a traditional, maybe Google ads, uh, you know, advertiser where you can target different terms, different keywords, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, and there's obviously like audience. So, you know, and, and obviously there's been a lot going on over there in case you haven't heard where a lot of people noticed. that no. had those ad budgets, you know, pulled back from, from yeah. there. So, I'd say that, that that's one, and especially because of the, you know, some of those kind of more traditional search um, elements that, that could, could make sense. And then it really sort of depends on what market you're in. Like mm -hmm. one thing, if you're like D to C, um, Pinterest, and again, let's say that you're a, a traditional maybe um, PPC person that's like well-versed in search. I mean, there's like actual broad match phrase match, exact match, and Pinterest. I know people are, are talking about it. But if you're, you know, anything consumer, um, their ad platform is actually really nice. And then it really is like dependent upon where, like what you're doing, but you could find really niche spots on something like a Reddit, you know, it's, mm. it's Reddit, there's a subreddit for everything. Like, trust sure. me, yeah. there's subreddits that shouldn't exist um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know you could go in there and say like let's say it's it's we're advertising the the, the show here and we want to get more listeners there's a digital advertising there's yep. marketing there's uh scm advertising subreddit there's seo there's big seo there's tech seo you know there's a lot of different really niche um elements that can that could be fantastic for targeting um and so i think that, that that's another um another thought you know to do as well and then there's a whole bunch more like podcast like I, I can keep going if you want but there's a, there's a lot more more options out there too well i think i think the, the the moral of the story is that it's important for people to be open to uh options other than the obvious um you know we we had a a, a cbd client who was um you know, sort of 
committed for some reason to advertising on Facebook and they just wouldn't have it. They wouldn't allow those ads. And we were actually able to get the ads published on Twitter and mm -hmm. we're getting results. It was, uh, took a little work, like you said, but you never know, you know? So I think that's good advice. What, so <laughs> what is the future of ppc in your opinion i mean we're, we've got chat gpt4 we've got bard or whatever it's called and google land we've got all these machines we've got you know google making decisions for you what, what do you see as the as the future of uh of paid yeah that's a great a great question and i think we've seen a little bit of kind of how things could look i guess in a way where if you look at something like a dynamic um uh or, or let, let's say a dsa on on google where you put in an image you put in a, a couple headlines and things like that and it kind of creates an ad for you they all suck right like they're not good <laughs> like you look at these things and it's like wow if i hired a creative person to make a banner ad that would be much better mm -hmm. um and then i would say too like with some of the things like responsive search ads where it's um it's google's sort of like newer you know and uh, it's not what you have to do from a, a search text standpoint mm -hmm. you know you can't get that creative unless everything is like pinned and i think with some of these elements the ads are getting watered down right like you you if you look at what ads look like today um, just the tax and things, and then some of the display, you, you can tell when you see a, a DSA, it's like, oh, that is a DSA. <laughs> right. um, and so like, when you look at those, it's like, I look at that as an opportunity, right? Like, we, we can do something better, you know? And I mm. think if people start relying more and more on some things like ChatGPT, like ChatGPT is, is, is very nice. It's a tool. Um, I use it to, to re do some keyword research, uh, ask questions, yeah. things like that, help lay out some formatting, um, say, what is this page about and see what it comes back with. <clears throat> but to think that that would like replace things. And if you're using that to kind of replace like <laughs> your ad at copy creation, I'd be very concerned, you yeah. know? So um, even with some of the new images, like the, um, what is it? It's not the... Uh, mind journey right like the, that mm -hmm. that ai yeah i was image. gonna say it sounds like you know the creatives for ads is is similar to ai images you're like that's ai i can tell yeah 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 but like at the same point how can you how can you beat that right like i right. wouldn't say let's like use that and just save time i would say how do you make something way better than this mm -hmm. other junk that other people are going to put out here <laughs> right. it's using like ai generation and just like you know all that different different stuff so to me i think the big thing is like um now that there's api for chat gpt uh you know that'll be huge for different yeah. different softwares and things like that to help put it in and you know here's a look at your ads um and you know make little changes and things like that so for a lot of software companies that's going to be huge um but i would say you know use it to assist kind of probably like everybody right. would say not to uh, replace uh, we have a saying here, uh, rule number one, don't trust the tools, use this tool as much as possible. So I think what I'm taking from you is, um, don't be lazy. <laughs> right. Don't and I don't have this. You took my tool out to dissect it. I, I got to get it put back in there. Uh, you'll get it back. It's, you got, again, you got to read the fine print, but you know, it's all good. No, you'll get your brain back. No, Greg. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kathy was right. I, I, appreciate you coming on here and this was all great great advice um so i'm excited to share it with the world and uh i really appreciate your time today all right thanks so much john thanks for coming all right bye everybody